March 13, 1993, a massive blizzard strikes the east coast of the United States, leaving the wake of destruction in its path. Three-year-old Billy Corr is stunned speechless. March 13, 2006, Billy Corr begins school where he meets his current best friends. 16-year-old Billy Corr is stunned speechless. March 13, 2012, Billy Corr wakes up, does nothing of interest all day, and goes to bed that night. 22-year-old Billy Corr is stunned speechless. March 13, 2018, Billy Corr receives a large package containing a very special computer. 28-year-old Billy Corr, well, let's see. Hello, this is Billy Corr from the Nostalgia Mall, and um, today is the 25th anniversary of the blizzard of 1993. And coincidentally, we actually have snow on the ground outside today. Um, we got about two inches of snow yesterday here in Greensboro, and that was um, the most um, my area has gotten since the blizzard of 1993 as far as March is concerned. So, yeah, that is um, pretty interesting. But um, that's not the point of this video. We have a box here, and I'm very excited to have this box in my possession. Because this, what's inside this box, is a computer I have been searching for, or I have been wanting at least, since I was about five or six years old. That's right, folks. A com this computer is something I've been after for about 22 years now. Now, I'm not going to say what it is just yet. Um, this is another mystery computer unboxing, but this is one of the most exciting um, computers I've ever unboxed in my life. Not quite as exciting as the 822, but it's still pretty exciting. So, we're going to go ahead and open her up. Oh, I'm excited. Um, it took about three weeks to get here, actually. Well, he mailed it out last week. I ordered, I ordered it off eBay, but um, it took him about two weeks to mail. It came by FedEx. And I'll uh, go ahead and give you another hint. This is not a Packard Bell. Not a Packard Bell. And considering the two 90s manufacturers of computers that I like, that probably gave it away <laughs> what's inside here. But again, Keep it a secret until we actually see it. I don't want to stab myself. <laughs> oh, this is duct tape he's got on here. This came from uh came from Alabama, by the way. Uh, I think Birmingham, Alabama, I want to say. Oh, I'm getting... getting butterflies in my stomach. Uh, well, we got some newspaper from uh, Alabama. <laughs> A uh, receipt. Never been to Alabama. At least I got their newspapers. <laughs> oh man, this is it, folks. This is it. <laughs> got to lift it out of the box. Of course, we'll have to fight through some bubble wrap at first, but. And this is a big computer. Very heavy. I think the invoice said it was 46 pounds. Can I get it out of the box, I wonder? Uh, all right, it's out of the box. Let's get the box out of the way. Where'd my knife go? Oh, there it is. Oh, 
Oh, gosh, I got a good look at it now. <laughs> Showing up on camera. Okay, it's good enough. You may already tell what it is. But again, until the bubble wrap is completely gone, I will not announce what it is. Maybe some scissors would be better. These um, scissors right here. I've had since I was in first grade, all the way back in 1996. And yeah, I've outgrown these scissors quite a bit, but they're still good for little jobs like this. I can't believe I have one of these in my position. And according to the eBay listing and the pictures I saw, it does work. I'm not going to say how much I spent on this. It was more than I usually spend on one of these, but I figured I may never see one any again anytime soon. So get it while I can. All right, about to unveil it. You can gently slide the wrap off. I'm touching one of these. That's right, folks. What you are looking at is a vintage Gateway 2000 tower. Just like my aunt's. For those who don't know, um, the first computer I ever used or ever even saw was my aunt's um, Gateway 2000 P5100XL. And this and she got it in May of 1995, and I first saw it, I guess, summer of 95. So, um, it looked exactly like this computer. And this computer is almost identical to it, except for the model number and the uh, 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 CPU clock speed. But, um, yeah, I have been after a Gateway 2000 of this case design for... A very very long time ever since I first saw my aunts back in 1995 I wanted one of these and I finally got one. <laughs> oh, this is beautiful beautiful so um, let's get the camera off the tripod and take a tour of it all right here's the front of it um, there's no yellowing got a blank here a tape drive here CD-ROM, uh, guessing, oh, it's a two-speed, huh? It's a very old CD-ROM right there. Another blank, floppy drive, a little bit of dirt on it. Got a reset. There's a turbo LED, but it's not connected to anything because this is a Pentium. And a power switch. Around to the back. power supply and the manufacturing date this was manufactured um, August the 4th of 1994 so this is probably about a year older than my aunt's so this is a very this is probably the old, oldest Pentium I've ever had actually got your COM ports, your LPT port PS2 mouse and keyboard a sound card, don't know what kind, a uh, video card, um, according to a uh, 
magazine article I saw from around the time this computer was built. Um, it had the specs for this particular model and it was um, the same video card that originally came with my aunt's and it was an ATI Mach 64 with two megabytes of RAM. I'm hoping that's um, what's in here. And a uh, modem that will probably never get used anymore. <laughs> oh man, well... And it's tall, very tall. So, why don't we hook it up and see what it does. Alright, here it is. I got it hooked up. I got it on top of my Gateway 2000 P5133XL. Which, by the way, I am actually planning to sell now. Um, since I've got a more era-appropriate Gateway 2000 now, I really don't have use for this anymore. So, um, I'll probably be listing that on eBay pretty soon. Well, moment of truth here, folks. Let's see if it survived its trip up to North Carolina. Got signal. So, so we got 16 megs of RAM. Unfortunately, the clock battery on this gateway is um, dead, from what I understand. And even more unfortunately, the battery is a Dallas clock chip and there's no means to replace it or add an external battery. And I don't have the soldering skills to do so, so yeah. This is going to never have a working battery ever again, probably. <laughs> It's got the oh. It's got the original um, hard drive in it, which is supposedly rare. It's a uh, 1.2 gig Western Digital from '94. A very antiquated BIOS. This is older than what was in my aunt's. Okay, suddenly we're in the year 2080. Set the date here. Well, at least we know it's Y2K compliant. And it's not 2017 anymore. Get your head together, Billy. And it's about 2.21 p.m. Why is this all? Why is all this stuff disabled? Hopefully, I don't have to do this every time I turn the computer on. That would not be good.
CD-ROM open. Yeah, and there's a disc in there. Money Town from Davidson. I guess it keeps, teaches kids how to do money stuff, I guess. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. Apparently it's not going to want to save its settings. Even after a minor reboot like that. That's not good. <laughs> you see, this is what I don't like about these really old computers that use these Dallas clock chips. You can't replace them most of the time. You know, working on vintage computers that um, were released when you were only four years old <laughs> is quite a chore. And by the way, despite all that, I think we got it working. It's not, my problem wasn't CMOS battery related. Let me show you what was going on here. Um, I opened the case and I discovered that um, the floppy drive was disconnected from the motherboard for some reason. As well as the um, secondary IDE channel, um, which I bel which um, ha carries the CD-ROM drive. And I also discovered the hard drive wasn't even getting power to it. I, tr I tried a different drive, didn't work. Tried a different Molex connector, didn't work. Turns out it was a um, problem on the IDE channel. And I... Um, I could have fooled with this cable a little bit more. This is what was originally connecting it, but um, I decided not to since it's not keyed and that gets kind of confusing. So I swapped it out for a IDE cable that is keyed. Hard drive powered right up. And I believe as soon as we press escape, battery's still dead, but oh well. We should be able to boot to the hard drive, in theory. Um, okay then. <laughs> well, I guess we can always try a boot disk. Okay, um, let's put this Windows 98 disk in here. I hope the drive works, at least, the floppy drive that is. I'm going to do without CD-ROM support for now. Now, um, according to the eBay listing, this hard drive is supposed to be able to boot into um, Windows 95. I'm not even going to be using this hard drive anyway, so I don't know why I'm bothering with this, but I guess peace of mind. So, yeah, it sees the C drive all right. Not sure why it didn't like booting onto it, but I'll try it again. Well, I went into um, F disk on the um, on the boot floppy, and um, even though the BIOS is showing this drive at 1.2 gigs, um, F disk is only seeing 500 megabytes of it. So I'm suspecting one of those um, settings in the BIOS um, is required for the hard drive of this size to function properly in this system. And unfortunately, I'm not able to save those settings because the CMOS battery is dead and irreplaceable. <laughs> so, I'm pretty much out of luck with this board, it looks like. Um, what I'm thinking about doing 
and it's a little bit unorthodox, but it just might work, is taking the motherboard out of this P5133XL since it's the same form factor and temporarily putting it into this system until I can source um, another motherboard for this. Um, I can um, get a motherboard from a P575 that I found on eBay um, for a good price, but the bidding um, doesn't end until next week. It's bid only, so I'm going to have to wait on that and see what happens with the bidding. So I don't want to start a bidding war on that. And then um, I can sell this off. But right now, I think I'll hold on to it just to move the motherboard into this case because, let's be honest, it's the case I'm most interested in in this system anyway. <laughs> And the motherboard on this one um, is, a, is a year newer, uses a coin cell battery most importantly, and supports larger drives. So I'll be a little bit more lucky in that. In fact, we might do that in um, our next video about this system. So um, stay tuned for that. So yeah, um, I'm still very excited to have this, again, mainly for the case. Even if the motherboard is a little bit eh, I can always um, change it out for something a little bit better. So. Until next time, this is Billy Core reminding you we've got um, new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, sometimes in between. And if you want to, um, you can support me on Patreon. The um, link for that is in the description. So until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.